Welcome back, everybody. Today, I have the beautiful Julie Phelps with me once again, and we're going to share some insights and some things that we think are happening and information that people can find uh, beneficial at this point in time. Today is October 21st, 2022, and we're in the middle of the great, I'm going to call it reckoning, for lack of a better word. Whether that's going to be uh, true or not, we don't know. Um, but just there's a lot going on. We're getting uh, in the U.S. are running up to the midterms, and there's a lot of chaos, and there's a lot of um, tomfoolery going on. So we're going to try to help people navigate through some of that. Nice to see you, Julie. Hi, Sandy. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yes, it's and nice. Everybody else. Um, yeah, some of you may have seen me on other channels or, or with Sandy before. Uh, my background is my regular background was military so I was uh, in the RAF in UK and then I worked on space and military microchips and then changed fields into psychology but I was also uh, following all that um, it was actually four years ago yesterday actually my husband was taken uh, you know he died and so that was like uh, that was quite a, you know, a milestone, but I was okay. Um, but uh, following his death, um, I was in the connecting consciousness, which has been a lot of, you know, uh, issues with recently. But um, Simon Parks at the time spotted I was under Illuminati mind control. Um, so he then gave me some exercises to do and and some work to do it was very hard to connect with him because I kept cutting us off and from that I did a lot of my own work and I had another group that were helping me as well to start breaking free as soon as I started to break free I was starting to get attacked by electronic devices and also demonic so I was being attacked by two different sides at the same time but thankfully, and so gratefully, I was getting a lot of support as well. That is fantastic that you're sharing this, because I don't think people understand the significance of the electronics being able to attack us. And this is my spiritual clearing. It's a workbook that I use. It doesn't have an ISBN number, so there's no, it's not registered anywhere. So the government probably doesn't know it exists. Mm. But um, it talks about implants, probes, testing devices, and weapons and all the different places they can come in. So I want to, I'm, I just want to share this a little bit because I want you to touch base on this, okay? So implants from this or other dimensions, implants from past lives, ancestral inheritance, ETs, uh, implants and weapons by ETs in this or other dimensions, diabolic implants, devices and weapons, astral implants, devices and weapons, ET, occult, uh, which would be your religious um, devices and weapons, government devices, implants and weapons, cords and triggers, and electronically controlled devices. So exactly what you're saying. Now this is choiceless distortions. How do they send that to us? These are just some hexes, charms, spells, and modems. So they send it through the Wi-Fi. Mm. Yeah, they send it through that, but they also use satellites. So if they, especially if you're ex-military, you may be more susceptible to this if they go after you is is like, uh, satellite attack as well as through the wi-fi so uh for me i had quite a lot of that because um and the satanic side was connected to my late husband and they were after me so they were sending hexes and and psychic attack hexes. and then the electronic side uh that was military so um they didn't want me to leave the they were they wanted me as a dormant asset and once i started to break free they were trying every way to attack me mainly because i think they're afraid of us um i've talked to a lot of other people who have have been assets in the past and because we have certain special training um they're afraid we're going to get all those abilities back well i'm starting to get those back and um uh, and I connect with other beings now and I, I am getting the psychic abilities back so I can go in the room and scan people yes, um, and things like that. I couldn't do that before to a certain level. A lot of it was blocked. So now I'm unblocking those blocks. It's a lot of healing. It's a lot of uh, work. It's a lot of uh, meditation, but not just meditation. Um, it's a lot of finding any traumas to heal them because it affects your uh, your field around you um, so that as you can 
actually heal all that field then you can strengthen that and strengthen your natural we're all naturally into you know we all naturally have intuition so it's about testing that um and i started by testing like my friends recommended dowsing to me yes. uh, which is like pendulums uh and they were teaching me how to do that and so i'd get these intuitions and i think well is it my mind is it made up because i'm remember i'm deprogramming so i don't trust myself you don't trust yourself no no so i, I, I was like is this negative input is this something else trying to trick me so what i was learning to do was like get friends involved and i was very lucky to have great friends who were very very good dowsers and psychics so they were helping me I would do the work and they said, well, this is what I got. And they'd say, well, no, that's not quite accurate. Or that is very accurate or that's perfect. So from that, I was learning to get back in touch with my own psychic abilities and then kind of retrain myself. And all that, try, you know, start to break free and I started to trust myself more. And then, but I still on certain things that are really important to me, I will go to my friends and say, well, you know, I won't tell them what it is. I'll just say dows on this or what do you think psychically? So I don't give you my, I don't give them my bias. No, you don't. That's good it, for you. So that, so that they can then come back to me and see what response they get. And totally. then I can make sure I'm not being affected or anything like that, because I realize I've been breaking program after program after program and it's exhausting breaking these programs it's not just a simple thing they're deep-seated uh trauma-based programs so it's a lot of trauma to heal uh but once you bring that trauma to the surface then you can start healing it uh and that's what i've done so, but it's facing like a dark dark things enabled to move forward in that respect so like you were talking uh, uh, earlier about paedophilia and that um you see paedophilia and that sort of trauma that very often creates a demonic attachment or some sort of negative attachment which is you know why do you know why that is because we are connected to our one self or higher self or god self our soul which is in our heart and these children aren't meant to be hurt violently the way they are. Even if it isn't violent, they're not meant to be hurt by it being sexualized as children. So often what I find is they send their soul away to protect themselves because they can't bear what's happening to them. That creates a vacuum where the demonics can come in. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I see. So even though you're describing what happened to you in the military, it's it's no different if you're in the military or with somebody in your family who did it or somebody at school yeah. or a teacher yeah, or a priest. Exactly. It, you're, we all have the same thing in common, which is we're connected to our soul. And that's what a lot of this is, is bringing that soul back into us and mm. connecting with source or creator energy. But often the children, because this is such, um, there's so many layers that keep this dirty little secret from the people who work in the system. What happens, the child may tell 10 people and 10 people say, well, you liked it, didn't you? Or I don't believe you. So then that person doesn't trust themselves. And exactly what you just said, that's what the whole goal is for all of us to come back to trusting ourselves. Your answers are different for you then my answers for me we might ask the same question what is my purpose but you're here for different things than I am so you'll get a different answer but you'll get the right answer for you so I just want to explain that for everybody that no matter if you've been hurt and suffered different types of abuse it's not just the sex abuse but whatever types of abuses if it's too much for you you start to not trust yourself and there's a lot of people 3d people who are very ego driven they're, they honestly get off on somebody else getting hurt because they think they're going to get ahead now. Like there's there's a whole layer of, of ugliness around this whole topic, which I, yeah. I don't want to go into that today. I want to I just want to yeah. just to put a bit of that out there, mm -hmm. so we understand no matter where you were, we all have to go through the same process of trusting ourselves, liking ourselves, being able to know how powerful we are. I always say we're I A, not A I. We're intelligent already. So exactly what you're saying, they want to stop you because you are powerful. Exactly. I mean, we're just we're multidimensional beings. Yes. And they want to cut us off from that ability so that they can control us and use us. So it's about reconnecting all that. This is what AI is about as well. It's about another layer of disconnect. 
yes. from source or God or whatever you'd like to call it. it it's from the true loving source uh, because um, God is a loving being. Which it's a loving. It, we can't it's really a consciousness. It. Yeah, consciousness. Because yeah. you can't say it's like a being. It's an energy. It's, it's a knowing. Energy. Yeah, it's, it's right. yeah. Uh, but it but the free will side allows some of these negatives to develop. Um, now, what I've um, more recently, um, I mean, we're learning all the time the connections between what's happening here, what's happening with uh, other dimensions and also other beings. There's the positive beings and the not so positive beings. And um, we've got a lot of negative energy on the planet at the minute and we're going through quite some challenges as we all full, full well know and the way what we need to do is build up our resilience uh, and our fortitude to that and it's quite difficult to do that because we're bombarded with so many different challenges at the moment and concerns but what I find uh it's like um, a huge amount is going to happen from what I've seen, probably around 2025 and then around 2030, which is the dates they have for the, um, like the Great Reset and all their targets and Agenda 21 and Agenda 30. They have these targets. If you go to any of these, conferences or like i went to the space con this year it was all 2025 2030 now you think well why is that what's the reason behind that and that that's because they know that uh from what i've seen in the evidence is this there's gonna be we're gonna reach solar maximum 2025 which means very likely around then we're gonna get solar flashes or solar flares that may well knock out our electronics and our electricity and all the rest of it. Uh, which, as this leads to the Deagle thing, but we can do things about this and that can be quite cheap to do and and it can create our resilience to all this. Um, can, I, can I ask you about the date 2025? Because I get a feeling it's going to happen earlier and I had an epiphany a couple of days ago with all this graphene that is ingested in a certain substance that people are putting in their body that it's creating circuitry in the brain. So when this solar maximum comes in, are they going to fry people's brains and that's what's going to kill them? Well, to be quite honest here, I mean, we're going to have numerous challenges. There's going to be knock on effect. We're already this winter, they're talking about power cuts here for so long or whatever. And then of course they want to crash the system, but that's separate even. So, um, we, we tend, we, we were balanced on the knife edge the other day, uh, with the, banks more or less almost crashing in the uk completely they and need then to it, go. Uh, so yeah so it, well we don't want to financial system because no hardly any other planet has a financial system you don't use a financial system but here of course you've got to eat um and um but here right here is one of the few places in the whole country literally at the end of my road is 6G. They're turning it on at the end of this month. Why so that's an interesting... This is hardly any... There's a couple of other places in Lancashire, nowhere else in the country, just here. There's a map out there. Uh, somebody was passing it around on Telegram, and it's a global map showing you where all the 5G towers were. So I enlarged my map where I, I live, and there's two of them, but they're not in the places that I thought they were. But they say they're 5G. But when you listen to Robert... Are you familiar with Robert O. Young? No, I'm not actually, no. So he's, um, I don't quite know what kind of a doctor he is, but he's hes doing a lot of research, looking under the microscope and finding, you know, things that are in the that one uh, uh, formula. But what he said is they're attacking us on all levels, all the Gs, but they're using different frequencies. And so it's going to affect us. So what is our number one job to do? Just protect ourselves energetically, be able to take the uh, do the dousing if you're dousing your map and go through and look at your property and see if you have stray electricity, curry lines, Hartman lines, underground water. You got to look and take all of that out. But then we have to use um, crystals like shungite. Um, what's another? I use meteorite and I use moldavite. 
Mm. And I went to an event one time and for whatever reason, I didn't wear my normal necklace. I wore a Moldavite stone about this long. And a man came up dousing. It was a dousing conference. And he comes up to me and he starts, you know, spinning the his pendulum. He, and his pendulum, he has dials on it. He's the only man I know who has one of these. And I told him when he's gone, I want it. But that's here or there. <laughs> And he looked at me and he goes, you're the only one who's not um, absorbing radiation today. And I'm like, really? But it was the Moldavite, which is part of the meteorite family. Yes, so if people don't have Moldavite or meteorite or Shungite would be the probably the least expensive of those. So I've got them in my purse. So I've always got them on me. I've got them in my car and my doorbells. I've got them around my bed. So I create a bit of a cage that way as well. So just I just want to give that as a, a tip that yeah. there are other things that we can do. So I so I don't know if the five G is going to itself do it to us, or if they're going to be able just to play us almost like a, a musical instrument between all the G's. Well, the six G I looked into it, and unlike the five G, it actually states in reading up about it, it's used for control. They can amplify. Well, they can do it any with the the, the five G amplify each device, but they boast about it. And then it's about assimilation. So the the six G is about assimilation. So it's at that level. Assimilation uh, to what? Would, would, to would that AI. be like mind control? Yeah, yeah. It's it's a heavy weight assimilation frequency. It goes to one like some like one tera gigabyte or whatever frequent. I can't remember the actual name of it, but like the normal frequencies for five G is like the six G is phenomenally more. Wow. So their their frequency range is phenomenal, but I'm not I'm not overly concerned about me. I mean, I've got resotone, I've got shungite, but I also the main thing with me I I found is when friends of mine brought in higher dimensional beings because I was being targeted. I'd I'd literally covered myself in malar. I dove my ground sheet. They were really trying to kill me, and uh, the pain throughout my body, my eyes skin burning. You know, wow. literally I was being hit. My internal organs started to fry um so all this uh and i lost five teeth through that actually because it got it gets your fillings in other words any metal fillings it it vibrates underneath causing huge pain but then it disintegrates the tooth that's what it does isn't that interesting because your teeth all of our teeth are connected to meridians in our body mm. and uh, to organs in our body right do you use some um, black seed oil in your mouth no i don't but maybe i should do <laughs> So it's, it's called, I think it's cumin, but it's just called black seed oil. But what you do is swish it in your mouth for about a minute. I was doing it five or 10 minutes. And what was happening, I, I started, I can call it detoxing, like little, I had a little, like, what do you call it? Like the, not a cyst, but little things were coming up. So I had to stop. But what it does, it grows back your enamel. Oh, right. Because I was brushing too hard. So, so it looks like my teeth that had little marks on them, they're gone too. So it's really an interesting item. So black seed oil for, um, it's not it's not like I'm not giving advice or anything, but I'm just noticing a difference. Some people are taking it internally, taking a teaspoon a day internally to help detox all this stuff out. Is it possible to get rid of your metal fill fillings and replace them with the white ones? I've got rid of most of the teeth that I had, but I've got a few more. But uh, I think, well, there's, I can't afford to do that now. So uh, it probably isn't possible. So, you know, I'll just have to wait and see. And some um, of us do have metal in us. So what, what about root canals or people have metal in, the, in their limbs from broken limbs or things like that. So we do have metal in us. And well, it's when, just... When the major solar flares hit, we do need to probably... It's going to cause pain in those areas. Now, because I was being microwaved at high levels, I'm not sure if the pain will be any more or whether we need to be in a Faraday cage. I'm not really certain because the scientists... Um, like a suspicious observer that they're coming with more and more information about this. And they did say there could be an issue if you got metal implants, but especially if you got pacemaker though, you will need to build a Faraday cage because these solar flares, uh, the scientists all agree with this is that it can affect the pacemaker. Um, so, uh, definitely with that but again these frequencies are increasing with the cell towers can affect that as well yes. so definitely need some either crystals or other devices to try and mitigate that especially and you can use aluminum blankets i understand as well to make yourself a faraday cage i know people who are was being attacked uh, I can't remember 
important. It'll work to a certain level because that's what I did and it even got through that. It this did. Was it was targeted at me. It was very, very high. I was cracking the plaster on the ceiling. It was so high. It was Yes, I've heard that. Uh, I can do that. You know, this is interesting, a little off topic, but I know people who went down to the rally, the trucker rally in Ottawa, and I went down for one day, but I had a sign that dealt with pedophilia. I wasn't do doing the freedom thing. But anyways, um, I wore my, I wore my uh, what do you call it, my Moldavite, and I had my meteorite in my pockets. I know four people who thought their organs felt like they were burning. One felt her lungs were burning. One of them, his throat was burning. So they, they figured they were directing weapons down there as well at, at, the, at the people just walking around in the crowd. These people are evil. Yeah. Yeah, they must have been then because that's very much the symptoms of it. Um, so uh, one of the main symptoms is burning skin, uh, burning yes. eyes. Uh, they're the, the initial one. symptoms. Um, and then one said he take he would burp and it would taste burnt when he burped. Yeah, well that yeah. So as uh, I'm obviously it depends on the individual probably what it focuses on, yeah. but as they turn it up then you start feeling that the even more uh you know the pain that increases even more and obviously for them to do that they were turning it above the levels that are because they've got that la uh lado la la or lard it's that l it's the sonic weapons that they use to riot control okay uh, and that would normally burn your skin, so it would make you move out of the way. But if they're getting your internal organs, that means they're turning these equipment up to try and kill you, basically, or, yes. or cause damage, uh, literally past that point of just causing um, surface pain, as it were. Yes. Um, no, it's evil. It's just absolutely very, evil. Various, yeah, indeed. Um, and you wonder, who can do this to somebody else? Like, who is that? Un unconscious and and or or um enjoys p causing people pain in that capacity like, the, draco, <laughs> the draco reptilians that's what they feed off and this is ultimately what it is it's these other beings that are feeding off this energy um and they uh it's their food source so it's one of their food sources they can eat people too because to the reptilians we're a food source in many ways by uh causing harm and feeding off neg negative feelings or or pain or they can you know feed off us but they don't eat you know i've witnessed firsthand uh people being taken into a warehouse and then butchered by reptilian uh beings and um so and that's why i don't eat meat after that but it it's yeah, we're not the top of the food chain. We're not the top <laughs> no. of the food chain, no. Not too many people can handle that. Was it Phil Schneider was talking about, I don't know if he called it the Greys or the Reptilians. Now, he was a man back in the 80s, was in the military in the United States. And he said what they're doing is um, eating the the energy, the, the um, what do you call the glandular secretions from our chakra system. Like that's what they're eating, mm -hmm. the energy. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes you wonder because they really don't tell us much about what purpose our glands serve. They don't want like measuring uh, what do you call it, monitoring hormones and things along that line and the emotional impact. They don't want us knowing any of that. So you have to go to somebody else and get their opinion of what if it's a mental health diagnosis, whatever it is. But it's interesting just watching how the system is set up. And I'm finding I, I can learn sometimes as much by what I see. And then I also look for what I'm not what they don't want me to see, what they're not showing me. And it's almost like you turn around and look behind you. And that's where it's all happening, right behind the scenes. So when I look at different, like I like to get information from different sources, I look at what they're showing me. Then I look at, well, what should they be showing me and they're not showing me? And it doesn't matter if it's internet sites, if it's social media sites, like, you know, they, everybody's got their own theme of whatever interests them. But sometimes if they're really trying to make a point that they're good guys, then you look and say, but you didn't point out this thing and you didn't point out this thing and you didn't post about this thing. And then you can really start to get a sense of, who's who and who's genuine and who's not right well i think uh, what i've seen a lot of what's going on there's a lot of genuine people out there that are doing youtubes and things but then they get influenced now some of them are, are being influenced by bribery and, and accepting it now others are being remotely influenced and they have no idea 
Can yeah, you talk you about know. that? You'd mentioned that in your other video, and that was one of the points I wanted to hear you you oh, talk about. I because um I've been so I've been attacked in all different ways, uh, and I've had to work on my own self through all this. I understand what it's like to be fear uh, influence or them trying to influence even me. And I get, I'm lucky I've got, I'm surrounded with good friends who are like, tell me if I'm being influenced, they'll say, Julie, what's wrong with you? Or Julie, what, you know, is this your thoughts? So it's about, it's about learning if it's your thoughts that are coming in or if it's thoughts from other beings or other entities or even electronic devices coming into your mind or is it your own thought? So, so, so you can you ask yourself that though. Oh, yes, you can. This is it. You can douse on it. There's certain protections with dowsing, which I find a very good source. Now, if I'm a bit unsure even with that, because some of the more powerful ones when they're sent at you, you know, every, every, anybody's vulnerable. People yes. who think that they, I'm okay, I'm afraid they're ones who tend to get targeted because their ego saying they're okay they can't possibly be touched because i'm connected to god and all this but they can find these little tiny yes. ways in and we don't even realize and they can be very subtle and they can find their way in your back because you're not yes. looking back there it's almost like they come at the back chakra points and also they can amplify ego so like um they'll feed off ego uh so somebody might have an ego they, they want a following uh, this is the problem with YouTube. Some of these YouTubers who actually do it for a living and they rely on that, they start wanting more and more followers. So they focus on the followers and that can be triggering for the ego and that can leave a little gap in then for these negative influences to start amplifying certain aspects and then lead them off track. So, so would that mean that, that your intentions people. were, would that mean that maybe their intentions, they were doing things for the wrong intention? I think they were doing it for the right intention, but then they get led down a path that's going off what their original idea was because they're being led, their, their ego is being amplified by these negative entities who are managing to find a way in. Uh, so it's not that this, I've seen this a lot, not, I'm getting like connecting with some of these people just on the peripheral because I don't, you know, interfere with people. But I'm getting a lot of them are pretty good people, but they get interfered with. So, and they're not recognizing it. So, in other words, then they're carrying on kind of down a worse path. So, um, can we talk about the um, social media again? So we know the social media platforms were created by CIA, Mossad, MI5, MI6, the intelligence community. So what I noticed when I was out here talking about certain topics that nobody wanted me to talk about, all of a sudden I became the bell of the ball. And people are reaching out and talking to me, but then they would be nice, but then they'd say, oh, will you do this one thing for me? Oh, will you do this one more thing? And they start grooming all of us. So if anybody thinks uh, they're not, all these social media platforms aren't full of maybe ex-traffickers or people who've done things, who've worked in the system, who want to keep the dirty little secrets. If they see you are waking up, they're going to come and looking for you. So even those people are being targeted, as you're saying, their intentions might have been good. So the one that I keep getting was, I have intel, Sandy. Oh, really? <laughs> the next person, Sandy, I have intel. Oh, really? I have intel. Who are you working with? Some guy who's retired 30 years ago? Like, come on, guys. Like, But their egos get stroked, too, to think that they've got secret information that they need to get to me. And I'm like, you guys are all getting conned, I think. So there's so there's people doing this as well as the entity. So I really, you know what I find? If, if it's negative intention, it doesn't matter if we're in human form or what you're describing as the other forms. They all play the same games. They try to distract you over here, Sandy, over here, over here. If I'm about to do a, a certain talk with somebody, all of a sudden my, my phone rings three times. So they know we're, they know we're going to be on. Right. So oh, once okay. we understand the game, then, then you realize you're not crazy and you start trusting yourself even more. Exactly. So you can turn these around. Yes. I'm going to use it because you, you, you might get something something like you're saying an influence saying that it's like this last week i've had the illuminati write to me wanting me to join the illuminati it's like oh we'd be honored if you join i said no 
which will, probably won't make me very popular by saying this publicly now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, you know, it's like, yeah, you, they want to shut you up one way or another. And as I've said before, that um, I'm protected now by certain alien races or certain races that are, are pretty strong. So if they try and bump me up, there's going to be consequences. So what do they do? They want to try and get you on board some way or other. Yes, so they bribe you. Like, oh, can we kill her? But then they start targeting your family, which they have done this week. But, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you find that as well. They'll talk if they can't get to you, they'll target your family. Or... That's why if you're doing this game, you do it solo so that you don't uh you don't let them come at you. It was got to the point they were following me where I go for a walk. And and where I go, there's nobody there. So I see this guy around a bush. He comes jogging towards me. These guys don't have great personalities, and he goes, Hello, young lady. Meanwhile, he's probably 20 years younger than me. And I just looked at him, I said, Hello. I walked about another 30 steps, turned around, he'd stopped and was watching me. Because I want to see if I'm doing a secret pass off, and I've got I spy yeah, with my little yeah. eye going. So then the next day, there's another woman doing it, but this time I watch her, and she was not in shape, so she's jogging from the entrance, and I'm working my way back to it, and she's jogging past me. She's red and sweaty, and you can tell she's not having fun. I don't think she's a jogger, but I turned and watched her, so she had to keep jogging. But you wouldn't believe um, bikes, you wouldn't believe bicycles. They, yeah. How are all these people uh, uh, around to start doing this? And I think what they are is compartmentalized. So they don't know who I am, but they're told, go watch her. Go try to intimidate her. It's all intimidation. There's various techniques they use, right? Yes. It which there can be the intel. Well, you're, you're fighting sort of areas where you're more on the top of a flag list than other areas, right? Yes. So it's about resources. So are they going to put the resources in to tag you rather than somebody else? So there's that aspect, and it's really keen. As soon as you start talking about that area, they it, it puts you up the list. But what I've noticed, and this happens, and um, I've known it happen to a few people now, and cross, you know, cross fingers, touch wood, it's not going to happen to me, but I've got a lot of protection. When I go out in the car, I put protection around, is... What they will do, and I've seen this, is they'll remote influence, whether it's electronic or by psychic. So it can be demonic remote influencing. It can be uh, electronic and it can be alien remote influencing. So like the Draco are very good at remote influencing and other beings like them. Um, and they can like... I've known certain people, they're driving along and they have a car swerve towards them. I mean, one of my friends this last week, she was in a crash because uh, a, she said this car drove right at her. Now, oh. um, another occasion was like just recently, Chris Fleming, who does Help My House oh. is Haunted. He has been involved in uh, various... Um, he helps clear houses of demonic and things like that. And he was talking to somebody else who they both agreed that, you know, both of them been in car accidents. And this other guy said, yeah, I had this guy swerve towards me. And the last minute he managed to get in the ditch and this guy just like missed him just because he went in the ditch and then just drove on as though nothing had happened. Now, these people don't even know what's happening to them because it's it's like a walk in and a walk out. So they must Are have you a seen the people driving and swerving into the other cars don't know what's happening. Is that who you mean? Yeah, the people who are actually driving, they're just driving along as normal. They get a walk in, then they just they just don't even know they've done it. And they they and then they're heading towards somebody. Now, if they die in it, it won't to the to the entities it won't matter because good you know they they got their target and then the walk out leaves the, the walk in leaves yeah hmm. yeah exactly so can i ask you a question what's your opinion about um we're talking earlier about souls and our connection to our one source our god self our higher self our soul which is in our heart and if we are embodying our body then my, this is what i see that makes it more difficult for them to come in and I'll use an example of a trigger. You know, we've all had things happen where something will happen and you, you trigger. I had something come up one day and it was a double whammy, two things I saw online and it just hit me. And before I recovered, I went back and looked at something else and I was just out for the day. 
and I woke up crying the next day. I was triggered and I was triggered beyond belief. And I knew I had to go to work. So I had to get my act together. So, you know what I told the trigger to do? Get out. I got work to do. And you know what it did? It left because I had cast out the darkness and I'm looking around the room by myself going, if I'm by myself now, what was I five minutes ago? So, th so there's things that are, we're emotionally attached to or we haven't processed through, they can come in and get you through that too. So maybe that's where the walk-ins are coming through. These people are distracted with their own, whatever they're angry at or triggered with or haven't well, resolved. Actually, I don't know. You actually have entities coming, even if you're defended. I had one, uh, but this was when I was more fighting. The, the stronger you get, the harder it is for them to get in, but it's, they can still find wee boy. Yeah. And this entity was nighttime and it was obviously sent at me. It was some, I don't know what it was, but it was about kind of that big i felt it on my leg jump on my leg right and then and it was dark and then it jumped and it went for my throat and for my face i couldn't they're trying to kill you in your sleep because it go in so anyway i i couldn't say a recitation because it was here so anyway i like it managed to jump off but then I took a breath, but then it came back at me. This time I had to breathe. And as I breathed, it went in. And it was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? But then I got absolutely exhausted and fell asleep. Now, the next day, I knew I had to get friends in to help me with this because I tried doing recitation. It didn't get rid of it. So I thought, God, I'm going to have to call in friends. So uh, I knew it was still lingering or aspects of it was lingering inside me. And I'd done nothing you know, to do this. It had managed to get in. Now, I went to, had to go to a dentist appointment that morning. So I went to the dentist. As I came out, I suddenly got disorientated and I found myself on the wrong side of the road. And the car was coming. And just the last minute, I managed to realise and, you know, pull back. And it was like, oh, my God, that was the entity. So anyway, as soon as I got home, I got in touch with my friends and we all did like special recitations and things together. And I could feel it go. In fact, I was physically sick. So it got it out, but it's like, you know, that's just a prime example um, of something that occurred when it, you know, sent, literally sent. And I mean, it, 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 you know, and you find that with people who were, you know, even priests or um, some of these like, um, like Chris Fleming, Fleming and others who were dealing with these, uh, they can get attachments and they have to clear themselves all the time. All the time. And, yes. and really, really, if they forget one day, you know, they might just forget, oh, I'll be all right. That's when they get in because yes. it's like, it, it, it's just, you know, they get distracted and then they utilize that aspect to then get in. So, yeah, it's a learning curve. But I think through all my experience I've had, which is an awful lot over the last couple of years or a few years, it, each one I've used as a quickening. Each one has been like a very, very fast lesson. Well, that's a good lesson, Julie. I keep saying I wish it was less painful lesson, <laughs> but it's been a, like a real impact lessons to to prepare me for what's coming because we we do need prepare. It's going to get more challenging. It's so going to get much more challenging, and I think just from what I can see, what's going to happen is the dimensions, the planes of existence, are going to all become one and we're going to see some of these scutters and we're going to see some of these energies even with our eyes open i can see and, them many because i can yes. choose them more now so i can see these energies around and uh, i don't I always all sorts of things now but i mean ordinary people are going to start seeing they're going to start losing their mind yeah so we we do the more of us the better who are getting prepared for this because we'll need to help other people yes uh, if they want help right Mm, if yeah, they want yeah. help yeah yeah you can only do it if they want help and you know obviously because it's free will uh so you know this is what you know i i agree totally i don't you know i only support people who need it who want it, who want it. For it. yeah um because can i ask is, can i ask you to talk more about the ai uh the sources of ai that are off planet so we've talked about the electronic one, but what is, and you said they're going to lose. I don't know. I don't know if you, you said why they were going to lose, but you're talking about the sources of AI, um, the dark energies. Well, what I've, from a very young child, 
um, an entity came into my bedroom and I connected with it by accident. I don't think it was meant to abduct me. Um, it, I connected with it because of my abilities and I was pretty young and it and I connected so far back I went back to its own domain and that was that was a really really it was a lot worse than lower fourth dimension it was a very it was undescribable it was it was uh, a very very dark place so dark there is no language that can describe how dark it is but it wasn't from this universe so uh, we've got this dark energy that's come from another universe that's popped through somehow into our universe and it it's like trying to spread it's like a, it's like a virus it's trying to spread now this is a battle of partly what's going on now it, it although it's not actually ai it's infected an ai from another universe that has now come through so that's a dark AI that's come through to our universe. So this negative weird energy cannot exist without AI and other or other things it can latch on to. So it can latch onto beings. It can work through AI. Um, so the like the Draco are controlled by this dark energy. That so they're controlled by the AI, which is controlled by the dark energy. It's like a loop that comes through. Is it like black goo? No. Black goo, black goo is all different. Depends where it comes from. The what I saw and I was involved with with was um a mission I was on, which was not on planet, it was off planet. This was um to destroy a a a, a black goo factory that the Draco were extracting black goo from this asteroid which it was living inside the asteroid like just like a sub like a, its own it's its own entity it's its own being it's not negative or it's just there and what the the draco do is they extract this and then they trap it in this force field like cube force fields and then they reprogram it and mind control this black goo so that it then works for them just like they do with us, just like other beings, they mind control. And then they use it in their computer systems. And also they can put it inside other living beings. Like I had it as well. And I had it cleared from me. It didn't particularly want to go, but it eventually didn't have a choice. But, um, and then when it went, I felt like I was like Star Trek, Seven of Nine, I felt disconnected. This is the effect it had on me. It's like I was disconnected from another organism. Um, it didn't have total control of your will, though. So that's something to be where to be aware of. We have the ability to out control this uh, thing, and also um, the black goo, and also electronic devices put in us. We have because we are multidimensional beings we can actually sometimes with support from others to reconnect to help us reconnect we can then turn these things off like i had a implant um in my lower spine which the military abducted me and removed it which i was awake for actually for part of it so i have a lot of memory of that they removed it but i was before then i was learning to turn this device off with, yes. and I could read the meter because the alarm would go off so it would be on then it, I'd psychically turn it off uh, no reading and then a bit later they'd turn it back on with a switch so I'd get an alarm again and then I'd turn it off again and so this game was going on uh, but uh, the more I was doing the more I was keeping it off so this the practice, is, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we have actually control over this. I mean, I don't recommend getting anything like this or, you know, you need every method possible to clear these things. So I'm talking about my experience. So there may be some other devices that are different to this. I don't. I can't say every single device I know, but we do have a huge amount of uh, uh, power in our... Um, multi-dimensional cells 
because we, are, we have we, if we can turn on all our abilities uh, with responsibility we can be so much benefit to the whole universe and galaxies in a positive way especially if people can do it together and what the aim is is the negative and the uh, Draco and others is to use us uh, in a limited capacity, wherever they want to use us, they want to use us to do the same thing, but in a negative way. They yes. want to use humanity to uh, spread throughout the universe and cause absolute mayhem to expand their dynasty and uh, gal you know, galactic wide um, empire. Um, so it's that, you know, but higher dimensional beings are getting involved now, and this is where it comes to the solar flares. Now, Earth, in a way, is a prison planet. Now, they can take you off planet, but Earth itself is a prison planet because the Drake, well, I don't know who put it there, but they, the Draco are involved, but I don't know if they put it there. There's a, a death trap. So when you die, they'll recycle you to Earth. There's a uh, reincarnation. Now, it's difficult to escape this. And I was saying, well, if you follow the, if you don't go to the light and you go to different, uh, you know, more natural light, that's bad. You know, I got that. That's the way out. But even that can be very, very difficult. But what's coming up is these major events on our planet, like solar flares and then the may and the uh, mini nova that will be coming up. Now, it will, not everybody will make it through this, but from what I'm gathering with the higher dimensions, one, it will get rid of the AI because it will not be able to survive this no matter what Faraday cage you put it in, it will not be able to survive this. And also it will break their system of control on the planet. So it will free Mother Earth as well because she's a prisoner as well. It will also free us. So even if you die, death is not the end because it's not really dying. It's just our shell shedding, uh, yeah, shedding, and we can then be free to go elsewhere and stay on Earth. It, because if Earth is free, it won't matter. Then you know what I mean. You know, you won't be trapped here, and then it'll be a much more positive place. So I do see long term it being very positive, but we've got some huge challenges to go through because if we can't destroy this. AI, then Mother Earth and the Sun will get together and they will do enough to destroy it. Well, we're going to be on the with it. So we've got to hang on there and we've got to prepare so there may be flooding in coastal areas. You may need to be underground by, you know, if we're still around by 2030 or around that air time onward. But you need to prepare. You'll get intuition by then. But the weather conditions are going to completely get worse and worse. Now, we're already heading into a global famine because if it, there's a lot of um, very good sites that are covering uh, crop yields throughout the world. And it's not going to be this year. This year is going to, you know, get a bit shorter going to be next year because it's like the sick the way farming works it will be next year because it's because farmers aren't able to plant because of the cost of the fuel and the amount of money they get back uh can so i ask can i ask you your opinion on this um when you look at all the gmo foods hmm. and you look at what it does to our gut health which part of our gut instinct so a lot of this they're going after the third eye they're going after our gut and they're going after our heart right but when you look at all the gmo foods and the absolute garbage quality of food is this part of the reset and why i'm asking this is i met a fellow at a dowsing different fellow at a dowsing conference and he was i would say in his 70s and he created energy gadgets but he showed me one of his books and it showed all the different frequencies and all the different radio waves. And he said what they had used to do before Monsanto, they would have a water tank on the back of their tractor. They would, um, uh, what do you call it? Align it to a frequency. They would set it at a certain frequency and that's what the fertilizer was. So is this all gonna be bad? And I know farmers don't like my, me saying this. So I'm not, it might be bad for them in the short term, but will there be a better way that we don't poison the planet? Yes, because this is what, uh, I mean, I've looked into Rudolf Steiner Yes. And here's biodynamic farming. Now that looks at energies and frequencies within food. I haven't seen that. Also about connecting with Faye. 
and, and, and the elementals, which is yes. all important. And it's a bit like, as we know with water, with the experiments done about positive intent in water and then looking at the crystal structure, oh. which is very balanced. And then you look at negative intent to water and you look at the crystal structure and it's almost destroyed. It's in a terrible state. And this, oh. as you say, we've been poisoned. Our air, water and everything is it's just uh, food has been absolutely poisoned. I mean, it affects me. I'm very sensitive and I'm trying to amend that. But at the moment, you know, we just got to manage with what we got until we can get going. I'm hoping next year to get going with actually what I've been told now, because I'm trying to work with the elementals and listen to them, which is a challenge because I'm not tuned in and it, it's like I'm not brilliant. I'm a learning process. Uh, and I'm going along the line of uh, forest gardening now on horticulture because um there's lots of different reasons for that one you've got the layer of the tree so you, you you have various different trees but also uh the big nut trees and things like that walnuts and things like that and then you have <clears throat> although walnuts have to be separate because they they have a bit of a a negative uh, they have like a toxin that okay. doesn't allow um other plants to grow around but other trees right and then you have lower you then you have apple trees that might be not so big and then you underplant with perennials and bushes like bush bush plants like uh, blueberries and things like berries, that and, yeah. and berries and then under that you have perennials and then you have annuals in between that and it's a more natural way of creating um diversity but also more healthy um you know it's completely organic but the coexistence of plants and things uh, and also i've been getting a lot of like uh, information about you know how you get the old earthworks and also indian circles um medicine wheel yeah medicine wheel i've been getting that you no know, you must plant in certain ways and create these mounds and like old earthworks and i've got various books that have just turned up and i managed to get them um to look at the energy flow of like doing this as well so there's that aspect so there's energy flow water energy and then uh you've got the different forms of plants uh the symbiosis of that the elementals the fey so respecting them um and it's, you know, it's, it's interesting you, you bring them up. This guy was um, a priest who wrote this book, but he talks about the elementals and the, um, what does he call He talks about the Fae as well, but he does talk about the elementals that are um, mad at us and some of the fairies oh. because we can't see them. So they're being yeah. ignored by us. And I could feel something in the kitchen the one day it was at my feet and I'm like, what? And I realized like, you could just sense that there was something there, but they're trying to get your attention. No, so they're not do. demonics. They just... And I told them I had to stop annoying me and stop uh, picking up my feet or whatever they, I, I don't remember if they're trying to trip me or what it was. And it's like, well, it's almost like having a kitten like between your feet walking around or playing and everywhere well, you step. They can be you know. too, so they do have a sense of humor. But like, they do. Humor, actually. But, um, but the thing is, it's like, uh, there are negative ones that they fight. So there's the positive ones and the negative ones which are connected to this negative energy. So they're fighting too. And, okay. Um, uh, and so you know like it's about connecting to the positive ones but even they can be a bit mischievous and cheesed off with us because we've done something ignoring them we're ignoring them or done something in the garden we shouldn't do we're not respecting okay. them we disregard them and like that's about the connection there as well because like i've been taught by, by some of the native americans now to sort of now I, I give offerings of tobacco or or I'm gi uh, I was guided to give uh to bless um a hawthorn tree take a leaf uh but bless the tree and thank it then put some honey on the leaf and make an offering to the fae now this offering is not like oh I'm bowing down to the fae no, no. it's a show of respect Yes. It's a show of, look, I want to be friends with you. I know we've been awful as humans. I'm not that 
bad. So please teach me. Please help me to understand your way so I don't do things wrong. And so I can understand you more so we can coexist better and you can thrive and I can thrive and we can get together and work together. And, And people think it's like the Sabe or the Sasquatch. They're perfectly legitimate being here and they're they're on my land. There's well, I say my land, I'm custodian, I'm not it's not my no, land, I mean. land I've got. Um and I do find it difficult around them. When they come in, it scares me. I don't pretend they don't, but I've got to learn to get over this programming of fear of other beings, you know, and getting used to other beings, but there's an odd few I'm still getting used to. Um, so and the land is protected from the negative because I've got beings protecting it. Um, so but I still got to get used to that aspect, and it's my own learning curve, you know. And I, you know, I need to stand up in my own strength. And w- when you're alone, you've got no contact, no internet, no phone, it's pitch dark. It, it, you know, natural human instincts can kick in when it's pitch dark. You know, yes. when you feel the being, and you can hear the being walk around oh, your car, oh. and it's like, is that human? No, no, I think it's a Sasquatch. I think it is. And and then, or they hit, you have a big stone splash, and you can hear it, and they're just saying hi. But it's like, yes, yeah, stop being frightened. Stop being frightened. And that's, a, that's a big one about not being afraid. Yeah, and it's. it's- yeah. And it's got the, all the negative feedback. So it's a lesson. I'm learning. So I'm learning as I go along too, just like everybody just else. Just like everybody else. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I'm not telling myself off because, I, you know, I get scared. So I'm being absolutely honest with you. Yes, I know. Yeah. And, you know, I've worked with a few children and talked to them about things they were seeing. And one of them, she went to school, highly psychic. She could see one student had two demons with her and she would sick those demons on the other children. So she went home and told her parents and she didn't want to stay at that school, but she knew she couldn't tell the principal or the teachers because they give her a psychiatric drug, right? Yeah. So they moved her to another school, but um, she was in here one day and she goes, there's this thing on my back and we were doing some clearing and I said, okay, we'll get to it. So this is how sentient these beings are. After, I don't know how many minutes passed, she goes, it's gone. Well, it knew we were going to clear it. So it hightailed it out of here. So when her mom came to pick her up, the girl went into the bathroom, came out and goes, it's on the front porch. And I'm like, and this is the problem. We don't know about how these things work. And I'm like, really? Because I've had other clients come in as they try to come in. They go, something's blocking me at the door. It doesn't want me to come up the steps. But I figured it was their demons because they knew what they were coming in to do. So I put protection around the house to keep the darkness out. So they stayed out. They had to do what I told them, but they yeah. stayed on the front porch and then picked them up on the way back. So we, we had to do various things to clear it. But she actually drew what it looked like for me. And she like these people can see it. Another girl says when they go to the bathroom at school, they look in the mirrors and they can see something behind them. They turn around and there's nothing there. They go and tell the teacher. The teacher says, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I went through some things with this one girl. She can see ghosts in her bedroom and you know things along that line. And I told her how to get rid of it, but you do have to cast it out. But if we cast it out and don't know where, if you, if you don't know how to cast it out, just tell it to get out. Don't come back. If you do know how to cast it out and put it where it belongs, then you, you go ahead and do that, right? But um, she was saying that like, there's this ghost in her bedroom and she wouldn't sleep in her in her own bed for the next month. And when she's telling me all these things, you know, I, I had an opportunity to talk to her. She asked me for a hug and I'm like, okay, 10 year olds, Rachel's don't ask me for hugs usually, but, but anyways, and she's telling me all this and she's telling me what's going on at school. And I said to her, I said, you know, all the kids who are always on their phone, they're always talking about boys and they're always talking about fashion or movies. She said, yeah, I go, don't tell any of those kids. <laughs> uh, no. Because <laughs> they're not going to believe you because they're so, so some people are advanced at other ages, but it was so good for her to talk to an adult who believed her because her mom didn't believe her. Yeah. Which is, so, I, mean, I, mean, I believe you. I believe what you're saying too. Yeah. I know it's true. It's, it's like school, right from a young age, we should be taught how to defend against dark entities. How totally. To fear, how, right from we go, because, you know, so that we're we're prepared as we get older to defend ourselves against that, so we can have the purity, and then, you know, about and then also major things like Rudolf Steiner did about connecting with the land, about practical 
gardening and getting involved with that so you can feel those energies feel them yes all that aspect because he was very very keen on the aspect of um connecting with nature and spirituality obviously and also dance and music all these things are very important what have they been targeting recently they've been targeting our communities they've been targeting our fun so dancing or singing or things like this those sort of joy that, that lift us up spiritually you know um that's exactly what happened with these lock lockups because that's the first thing they took away was all the creativity, the um, modalities where you would have you, you would have a clearing or a healing, but maybe it'd be massage or touch or your hairdresser. So all of those things that you would connect in, that's what they they targeted because they don't want you having fun. They don't want you going to yoga and and doing different practices or tai chi or going to your group meetings where maybe you have a common interest, whether it's dowsing, what have you, right? So so that's what they targeted, but the box can stay open yeah. so that's yeah. our right brain function which is our intuition and i like what you said about um uh and uh ai artificial intelligence we're ia i always say we're intelligent already and it's exactly i don't see it exactly as you see it because obviously you've had different experiences but i look at the computer system our ram is our mind but they call it ram we have hardware which is our structural body we have software which is our programs we have a cursor, we used to call it enter now, but it was a cursor, cursive handwriting. Mm. But they had a cursor. So you start to look at all the similarities. So we are the higher intelligence. They mimic us. Yes, yeah. And when we understand that, exactly what you said, shutting things off. Now I have a question for you. I was practicing at one point with a few different people that we're with, but we would part the clouds if it was rainy and it would work. So with this weather modification, is it possible for enough people to get together? I'm not saying I can stop a hurricane. Like I'm just bringing on the sunshine if it was a rainy day and we wanted the sun. Is it possible, do you think, in your opinion, for people to get together and start changing some of these oh, weapons yeah. or are they too strong? It's difficult to say because the elements of this, of Mother Earth, uh, so there's elements of Mother Earth and she will, she has to break free too. So we can locally have an effect for a time but we will all go through from what i understand we'll all go through challenges of the weather because we can break like the artificial weather systems that are being brought in we can talk to the elementals in, in a local area but it it's that you know they have their own um aspect that's going to be moving forward because the mother earth has to break free too i mean it's part of us we have to break free with her so we it's that it's that symbiotic thing um and and the weather is going to get worse because the sun is increasing so that affects the weather but yeah we can if we all as a planet manage to break free already from all this negativity we could get rid of all this and then the Draco wouldn't have a, a hold on us. We could um, have an effect on the sun, you know, because it's all, we can literally, they've, they've shown this in the past that, you know, our consciousness, a lot of us can affect the sun, the planets, things like that. Uh, because they're all living beings but we've got to get rid of this ai substance and this negativity and then of course there's the trap around the planet that may need to have the solar flares no matter what we do psychically to manage to finally break that away um so i i don't rule anything out as impossible uh it's like we just don't see the path yet. Think, think nothing's impossible it's just improbable so i don't know is my complete answer to that okay uh you can affect it locally i've i've done totally it sing well. to the sun yeah you want to come up. <laughs> sing with all your heart um but there is you know there is other there's mother earth involved with this there's other aspects so uh, it's globally i 
can't see it at the moment. But... Yes, I, I, I'm not seeing it yet either because we're still practicing ourselves to be able to yeah. bring our abilities yeah. up. Um, one way this was presented to me and it resonates with me is humans are the nervous system for Mother Earth. So if we're in chaos or we're in shame or we're in fear or we're in anger, those lower frequencies, what ends up happening is we can't hold the space and have a, and be a calm nervous system where I'm going with this as being more of the observer. So but this is um, David Hawkins. It's a cone of consciousness, but he has a map of consciousness. And we look at love, love registers at 500, okay. yeah. 528 in the solfeggios. Yeah. But I like to come up here to empowerment and something I was reading recently, 700 to 1,000. What's, um, what's enlightenment? That's our spirituality is being aligned with truth and, and being curious as to what is going on in the world. And the more we're aligned with truth and we listen to something and we hear it and we go, I'm not sure if that registers, if, if I, I'm accepting that yet, which does not mean you're saying no, maybe you say I don't have enough information or you have to ask more questions. But I have a feeling as we start raising our consciousness that we are going to help Mother Earth yeah. buck off some of this uh, negative the AI. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, what I found as well is like the Draco and all those are very good at uh, psychically picking up on what we're gonna, you know, do in certain ways, but they can't do it for very far ahead. They try and use electronic devices to predict what we're gonna do. Now, when I get from higher dimensional beings to go and do something. I don't normally get a lot of notice. In other words, it can be a few hours really? or even not very long. This doesn't allow the negative then to counteract it because they can't. They don't have a heads up. They don't have a heads up on it. So interesting. So that's, that's really important. So also learning to follow our intuition, uh, which I have warned others about too, um, that if we get those red alert flags that something is going to happen, then the more you tune in, the more you can get that, then we need to listen to that because higher dimensions can help us as well, as well as our own intuition, but we need to listen to them. They can't necessarily come down here and stop something, but they can get you to avoid it. So, um, but quite often in our lives, we'll say, but I need to be at such and such a meeting at such and such a time. Then you're pressured to do that. And then if you do that, you're in a terrible accident and you're badly hurt. Now, you already had a warning before not to go, but you like countermanded that because of your, you know, you've got an expectation you need to be there. And it's about us changing that emphasis now and we've just got to really really listen where do we need to be am i safe we can clear the way and also if we get delayed or we lose our way is there a reason for this like i've got detours and then i found out or i've made you know gone a wrong way even with my gps or something like that and i've stuck with it and then i found something else something happened in the other direction so it's about following the like the flow but but working on keeping in line with that and it's not easy because it's easy to be distracted which is what the negative do they distract you with family they distract you with phone calls they distract you with everything else totally. but it's keeping that flow that will keep you safe because you know we we tend to get targeted not everybody's as targeted like us but if you go it's like a, a herd of cattle if you go above that herd because you making an impact or 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 you're doing something different then you're like a flag you're flagged up by them and it's like oh get them either get them back in line or do something else you know that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting analogy of the cattle because as soon as you do wake up they know who you are and, and I, i'm not going to go into too much but there was planes flying over here like crazy because i was working with clients who were also waking up and there's times you'd hear like three planes go over the house but you can use your mind as you said 
and you can create different visuals. Like you look at your computer screen or your TV screen or your laptop screen, it's black, it's a scrying mirror. So when you're looking into the electronics, you are creating their image. You are creating for them what they want, what they're telling you with the programming. But if you can do this on your own and just create a screen in front of your eyes, not behind your eyes, but in front of your eyes, and you see yourself, you're under a grassy knoll. There's three mm -hmm. feet, feet over yeah. your house. I'm one with the stones, the worms, the gravel, the dirt. There's mm -hmm. grass billowing over that. And I did that one time. Somebody showed me how to do that. Um, she was in charge of the national dowsers. Anyways, uh, they couldn't find me for two or three weeks. But then they found that consciousness that I was using. So then I had to change it to something else. Because yeah. they, this is what I told people in one of my videos about if a Draco ship flies over, you know, like put an invisibility bubble. Totally. Around. You can do that or you can do what you said. It's all about being invisible because it does create a shield. And and we are capable of doing that and bringing yes. that in. Now, I had a, a Draco ship over my house only about a week ago. And it was like, it was a triangular ship. So I was like, I, I can send out consciousness to see what's happening and what it is, which is another thing. So I can find out what beings are there, what's going on. And I picked up, it was Draco. So I called my friends in straight away. <laughs> I'm getting them down here. I called my friends in, you know, protection. Um, and then I stayed out there. I stood my ground. And said, you're not, you're not intimidating me. And this is this is what I'm learning because I have been in the ground. So I'm learning to be more stronger every time they come in. I'm learning to just like cut that fear off and start to really feel stronger. So I came back in and I thought, no, I'm going to remote view them. So I went up into their ship and I went into the mines for some of the Draco. And I said, you know, you do realize you are under influence. You think you're all high and mighty and, you know, the king of the sort of, you know, galaxy yeah, is yeah. so powerful and you're under influence. So, you know, just remember that. And so I was getting right into them. They and they don't like that. No, they don't like that. But I was telling them the truth. So yeah. it's like, no, you will, you know, you're going to learn the truth directly. Yes. Um, and people don't like it. So that's almost like the negative ego on a person. I shouldn't say negative ego because negative can be taken two different ways. But like somebody who's over identified with their ego in a human being, you tell them the truth. They don't like it. It doesn't mean the truth isn't real. It just means you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and then they eventually went, but you know, and then getting you know, positive beings. And I'm, but I'm looking, I'm learning to tune in because when I get a different being or a different ship coming around, um, I've had all different types of ship. Then I don't always, I'm not always able to tune in straight away, but I can go back and tune in. Um, you mean back in time? Like if, if yeah, you saw it at yeah. two o'clock, you could go at three o'clock and go back to two o'clock? Yes. Yeah, you really? can do that because you can, it's a remote room, you can know time, you can go back, you can whatever. So I have done that with the aid of friends because there was one I found really difficult to tune into. And then with their assistant, I, I, I finally tuned in, and they were lion beings. So I was like finally tuning into what sort of beings they were. And then I was really tuning in, and it all made sense what the how, how many years have the lion beings been around you know it's coming up big time as the pharaoh in egypt right now the uh, well, the I lion mean, that's not the pharaoh the sphinx yeah but here i mean they've been no i don't know i mean a lot of the beings in the universe are so so old i mean the yeah, lion beings have been around in the universe a very long time um so I couldn't say. I mean, I'm learning history. I've learned history a certain amount of the arachnids, but of course, some people are... I've noticed recently there's something going on. I think people are being influenced against the arachnids because I've noticed this last few weeks, people are mentioning spiders and arachnids and, and you know, in a negative tone. Now, I'm not saying there are not negative types of arachnids that I haven't come across, right? I'm not saying that. But it's strange how it comes forward. And also, these negative entities that are like shadowy black masses, they can shape shift into different shapes. So what the best thing to learn is to understand what you're up against is, as you all know, is to psychically 
read them to say is this a positive being is this a negative being is this an in-betweeny because there are a lot of beings like fae who were like humans they can have a bad day and be grumpy but they don't mean them bad it's just they're just like a human like yeah. in a bad mood you know it's, 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 so there's a, i distinguish between um you know the ones that are very negative which are very vampiric and 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 very very you know that's one category and then the very benevolent and you know and which i know somewhere right on the internet and then these in between well some of the mm -hmm. ones that i've come across that are right these are in between and saying so sarabase that's what you're in between some of them can be pretty cheesed off with people and and there are some that have been influenced by demonic too. So from all accounts, some of the Sasquatch have been like us have been influenced by demonic. So they can be dangerous. You but know what I ask? Spectrum. I just say if there's an energy, are you here for my highest good or your highest good? Yeah. Yeah. Because they they have to answer us because we're the higher consciousness. Are you here for my highest good or your your highest good? My highest good, great. Your highest good, get up. Right, or you move them through a black hole, you create a, a, a space for them and ask them to go for their highest good. And sometimes I, I don't I don't go into the angel thing too much, but sometimes I will call in some and ask them, I'll put them in a membrane and then send them through a black hole. I can show you how to do that one. You and I can maybe share some of our techniques with each other, you know what I mean? And just be able to you do what? Right. So a lot of those parasites that are the spiritual parasites, oh, a lot of people feel things moving in their brain. belly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some of them get sneaky, so I would, and they get fast, so I'd grab it by the tail, but the barbs would dig in, it would break in half, and it would still be there. So I had to figure out like a fish hook, how to get it out into a membrane and up. And even when you make a black hole, sometimes they'll put sheets of glass over it. So you're trying to push this demon through this black hole and your shoulders right. up, it's kind of against its bum kind of thing, trying to push it through. <laughs> but meanwhile, it created a, an invisible wall. So you got, you, you got, they always change. So you, mm. we can't use the same thing all the time. It'll work for a while. And when I notice it doesn't work, then I go on and I do something else and I change it up. But I don't say how I'm going to change it. I just do it on the fly. Yeah. yeah. And that is, that's a very good point because like, as they've, as I've learned to defend against certain things they they've managed to get in a different room. They're not going to give learned. up. And then I think, okay, right. Thank you for that. Now I know how to block that one now. So right. and then I treat it all as a learning curve. So instead yes. of going, oh no, they got me. I'm like, okay, right. I've learned. Really? <laughs> right. And another one on my list. <laughs> Same. exactly and this is really good that we're discussing this because as some of the children uh come in uh are born like even there might be teenagers now or what have you they're going to start seeing these things but they're going to be they're going to need to be given some of the tools and the confidence mm -hmm. and what i've noticed about western society it starts with like the church uh you are a sinner from birth and it's always about us being wrong well what does that do to establish self-esteem and if we don't have high self-esteem we don't have confidence in ourselves if we don't have confidence in ourselves we don't trust ourselves if we don't trust ourselves we don't know that we have the power to do this and this will also help to elevate our consciousness when you realize all the lies that we have been told so you and i we've talked a few times but we're yeah. talking similar things but from totally different yeah. experiences because we're all the same and this is what i think all of this the stuff that's in the is designed to create um what do you call it synthetic demons mm. so that they can turn around and um uh program them so, so even their demons are going to be inferior to our demons. We've got the better demons. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, so they're, they're mimicking us. And when we see that, we can rise above it. You ever tell your computer, I, I won't say this because I'll sound like I'm nuts, but I talk to my computer and I, I let it know, I need you, I love you. But I'm in charge because it's AI. It's the electronically yeah. held yeah. device that, that yeah. can read your, your mind. Well, so I if I want to... Yeah, sorry. I had Alexa the other day, right? It okay. Was a, and I don't have Alexa, but my mum does. And I just use it for timing food in the kitchen. That's about it. And turning on the radio. That's it. Anyway, I was like, oh, it, it, I just wanted to do a time. And it says, oh, would you like a tip? I says, okay. And then it said, uh, be careful on the phone. Uh be careful what you say then that was one tip and then it said another thing Aww. it said live life like life something to other life be or something like that it didn't make a full sentence it was an odd sentence I don't know. that's not was it a program live life as you can that was it 
live life, life as you can. And I thought, oh, that's odd. And then the third one it did was like really sexual. <laughs> I was like, what? This is AI. It's not supposed to be sexual. I thought, oh, so God. maybe that's where they're trying to blend us with the transhumanism. So they want us to get used to the idea that yeah. AI is sexy. And it's like, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the I real deal. He come into the uh, election and it left again. So this, this AI entity came in because I couldn't find a soul. And then it went out again. So I could, I could feel it come in and go out. So it was odd. Are, but are you familiar with um, uh, Gina Maria Colvin Hill? She um, does a lot of work with um, the electricity. Like she'll, she'll go into the weather cams and the traffic cams, and she'll point like at a, a, a street light, and she'll say, "You'll see the energy on the camera because the cameras will catch it, and it'll be moving." And she'll be like, "The dark energy is trying to get out." So the so the dark energies do use the electricity, which is basically yeah, we're all wired unless you're yeah. in a third world country. And also, did Miles pick this up? He said the LED type light is allowing this negative energy to really live in it. And they said, yeah, it's because it's very cold. That light is a cold light. It's not like a warm like the sun. It's not a warm light, and this is allowing that negative. It's like allowing that and those more of those entities a bit like constantine it's allowing the negative entities to come here in in and what we're going to see more of is them in physical form yes. in a, for almost like a solid solid form here you mean like and a shimmering even more stronger than that this okay. is what we're going to be up against because it's it's as they turn the frequencies up it's like they can use those frequencies they can form it's like um they're living it's a bit like us being in the metaverse but on a normal not but here you know like because we're in a bathed in this electronic field and they can live in that field so it's that um it's that it's that aspect you know so when the electricity goes down maybe it's a good thing you know i was oh. thinking about what you said about the arachnids if you look at the magnetosphere on planet earth and i should have had one that i can pull up maybe i'll do that and edit you look at it and it shows the energy from the sun and it shows a few rays at the front of the earth so so it's the sun shining on earth you see a few rays almost look like rays on the, uh, the towards the sun but you see more of them at the back if you look at that and look, consider that to be a spider or an insect it is exactly that we live in the web of things Everything yeah. is designed to mimic nature. Yeah. And when you look at the spiders of set, um, Harold Keltzvela from some, some of the videos he's done and the work he's put together, he said that's the demonics that are used by the Freemasons, which are the spiders again. And a, a couple of years ago on Halloween, I was down in Toronto and I was just going through a mall and there was a store, a kid's clothing store, and I had a little girl there with a black spider on her head. Well, that's where they sit when they want to siphon us dry. Well, I would kind of call them more, uh, I don't know, uh, like uh, Miles has described them as well. Uh, he's seen them in, um, like, insects. Some of them have six legs, actually, not eight. But I know what you mean. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. They can be the temple of set spiders. But, like, if you look at the universe, like they, some of the arachnids have told me, like, you know, the... The, the energy lines, the positive energy lines that, yeah. that you know, that you see. Are they the ley lines, you mean? No, I'm talking in the galaxies, the whole okay. universe, the lines. Now, there's certain arachnids that form that. So they're that higher dimensional that they form those lines. But conversely, like you're saying, there may be the negative arachnids or negative spiders of set that have these dark lines. That, so all energies yeah, plus one or minus one? Like, you know, do two priorities, you know, like, yeah. So uh, Tim Reefitt says all energy is either a plus one or a minus one. And zero, when you come to the zero point, that balance, whether we call it between the masculine and the feminine. Problem is, the center. He, he looks at hell space and that, which is, he's totally black magician. Stuff. Oh, he's totally a black magician. I'm not endorsing him, but I've learned a lot from that yeah, guy. Yeah, you're true. You can learn from that. Can you see these? Oh, right. Yeah. So these are the spiders. And then the one is the parasite that is in the, in the stomach. 
that moves around, but this is on the etheric world. Yes, so this is, yeah. um, Miles interviewed this woman. Shapes like that. There's loads of different ones. They're all different shapes and sizes on that parasitical level. And But you they're know. going on to the heads. And this is what I think they're creating in the vaccines. Not exactly these demons, but along this line. So Miles is the one who interviewed this, um, the woman who drew these. And I've got a copy of her video, but I haven't uh, watched it yet. But these are, so Miles, when he talks about the radio broadcast technology, he says they go into the higher than physical dimensions, like the fourth, fifth, sixth dimension, create whatever they want and blast it down to us in the physical reality. And these are the programs, but that's the, the, the parasites. So when you look at um, can't get up to the higher dimensions, because the parasites can't get up to the higher dimensions because the frequency is too low. They can be in the in-between void sections and the um other other dimensions but, they but these are man-made right these ones are these ones are man-made they're generated from the electricity and yeah, from the, to the lower form. radio waves so it's man-made i take yeah. those to be man-made yeah but there are uh, yeah they're definitely man-made or, or, or also ones made by the other beings too you yeah. know like, I, I don't know i'm not i'm just going by what miles is saying that right. the, this yeah. is the programming because i want us to be able to command our energy in oh, the physical yeah. reality yeah, yeah, which definitely. means that we have to understand how that works. So if you think you your, do. your your computer is sending you something because you thought about it and it's reading your mind, you're not crazy. It's doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it quite yeah. It's just the basic the basic ones, right? So this is this is interesting. That I think it's going to be a big help for people to understand that there's so much more that the normie world won't teach us. Mm. I'm going to see if there's anything else that we wanted to talk about. I like what you said too about helping to forge a new society because that's why we're talking about this to show mm. what's what is going to be maybe potential booby traps for us or what could be hard on us or what's going to be uh, difficult to actually believe because I've had I've had things jump on me at night one time and did exactly the same thing tried to kill me but it squeezed me and I couldn't get a sound out and finally when as long as I could get my voice which the word it all starts with the word I could get, I could Ooh, finally just make yeah. a guttural sound and it, it disintegrated. Now, what that one was, was I had a client the next morning. She's either from Norway, I think, or Denmark. So I and it was supposed to be a Zoom call. So I get on the call and I said, I had a visitor last night. And I said, this demon jumped on me and I go, but it wasn't mine. So I, I he asked it, is it yours? Are you here for me? She goes, it's mine. It's been dogging me for years. <laughs> so it came halfway around the world. Mm. Now, can you imagine me telling somebody that story? They think I'm crazy. Mm. But this is it. This is how we increasingly need to be aware because we've been kept away from this knowledge, which is yes. right for us to be free uh, mm -hmm. and, and be the our true selves, you know. Um, so, you know, we, as I said, you know, right from word go, we need to learn, you know, you defend, you, you defend your children and then as you, you know, they make sure that school or at home, you, you teach them defense and you teach them defense and teach them what it means to be a complete human being, all the different aspects of life, what personal growth is about, what spiritual growth is about, that you are a child that is entitled to, to everything, just as we all are and teach them how to have esteem and not to bully, but not to be bullied. And, yes. and it's it's not enough sometimes for one person to stand up if there's a group of them you need a group of them to stand up as we're seeing in the collective with the insanity of being what's pushed on us now we need more people to stand up you know so there's so much more that we can be doing and recognizing what they're trying to take from us whether it's the air quality the water quality the food quality uh, there's a few people out on um i don't know if it was robert Oh, young saying there's a GMO parasites now. That's what the GMO was all about, creating parasites. They're finding it. So there's a lot of people that are doing good work that are bringing all this to the surface. She wants to go again. <laughs> <laughs> she says, She's well, a sweetie. You've been on there long enough. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is a good place that we can, uh, we can stop too. So that's awfully sweet of her. If yeah. um, would you let people uh, will you tell people where they can find you if they want to uh, connect with you or meet up with you or if you want to and you can also send your yeah. stuff to me and I'll put it in the I description can, box. Uh, give you my email. Um, you know it's jhblackcraig1066 at uh, gmail .com. But also I've got um the YouTube Alpha to Omega Beyond the Matrix. 
Julie Phelps. That's the one. And they have a kind of shadow band me there. So I couldn't actually get on my own site twice now. I put it, I couldn't get on my own channel. So I had to go back through to, to one of my videos and get back on my own channel. And you keep trying. To, they're brutal to do those things. Oh, so you yeah. try a new way. If they won't let you in one way, you go to another way. Or you go and you put your name in under a search and you go in. And sooner or later, it's about two or three of them and you break through whatever blocks they have. So we all get that. I'm sure anybody <laughs> speaking up gets that, right? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I'm quite happy. Them, you know, anybody emailing me or... Uh, on the YouTube or you know as an email or I'm on Facebook as well but I can't remember my handle on there <laughs> I'll go in and have a look and I'll post that one too helps on there, but I don't... <laughs> I so if that... anyone is where people who could benefit from this video we ask that you share it and get Julie's messages out there get my messages out there because this is coming no matter what that we are going to start the veil is thinning yeah. And we need to empower people who want to be empowered and, and really step into their power. If they want to look at things and question things and, and they know something isn't right, but we're afraid to speak up because they didn't want to get ridiculed or mocked. We're not going to ridicule or mock you. <laughs> not at all. So, so thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank and you. with that, we'll call it a day. Yes. Thank you, everybody else as well. <laughs>